What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, I want to show you a deck that I am very, very excited about. It is a D Brigade deck. And frankly, this is one of those ones that I am pretty gosh darn desperate to be having a play with and trying out when the cards are legal over here. The deck list has gone and been shared by Battleloco underscore KH over on Twitter. Shout out to the lovely folks at Ensan Gaming for helping us find the deck list. And it really is an all D Brigade deck. But we need to start off with the Digitama, which I totally didn't forget last time. You can't prove anything. And what we've got here is really just... Well, we've got a 4-1 split. Like we tend to have, quite frankly. Now, the 4, we are rocking Sumamon. That is one that came around in BT2. While you have another Digimon in play with the same name as this Digimon, you get an extra 2,000 power. And you're going to notice as we go along here, there are some, um... Well, there are some similarities in terms of names here. So, that's going to work out rather nicely indeed. The one of that we've got here is the slightly more recent Missimon from BT4. While this Digimon is D Brigade type, it gains an extra 1,000 power. Now, clearly, we are all about D Brigade here. That is kind of the point of the deck. But an extra 2,000 power is better than an extra 1,000 power. So you need to make sure that you are getting Digimon with the same name out often enough to make it worth it. Otherwise, you're going to end up being just a little bit sad. Now, moving over into the level 3s, we are playing Commandramon. And what I mean is we are literally playing 16 level 3s. So you can kind of pseudo rookie rush with this. That's a lot of level 3s. And all of them are Commandramon. And as we've been going along here, I've been telling you as we've been revealing all of these cards, I've been saying, look, now we've got enough Commandramon to really start rolling, and now we do. There are four Commandramon that are out, and we've got a play set of all of them. So we got the one from BT3, which is a two cost to play normally. Nothing particularly special about this one, I must admit, but it's a two cost to play normally, and honestly, that's good enough. That is literally the reason why we end up playing this. That is a good enough reason to pop this in our deck, which makes me pretty gosh darn happy. We've then got ourselves, like I say, we're playing play sets of all of these. We've got ourselves a play set of the one from BT4. And the one from BT4 has got the amazing skill whereby on deletion, you reveal the top three cards of your deck and you play a commander mod among them without paying its cost. Now, this is pretty huge and also explains why we're playing so many Commandramon. Because if you prioritize getting these ones out and you can, can get them out, then all of a sudden, when one of these goes down, you will not guaranteed, but you will often get another Commandramon to come in and replace it. That is pretty gosh darn awesome. Now, we also have a playset of the one from BT5. It's a level 3 blocker. The 4 cost to play normally makes me a little bit sad. I don't really like that. But it's a level 3 blocker. So ideally, what you actually do here is Digivolve from your egg. And then you've got a nice cheap blocker. And you need blockers in decks. So this is pretty good. And then finally, we've got a playset of the one from the starter deck. And again, this is kind of expensive. We aren't loving this as a 4 cost to play normally. Two of them are, and that makes me sad. And it's got 5,000 power. And sure, if that's boosted with a Digitama, you will have a decent amount of power. But it still makes me a little bit sad here because, well, it's a bit expensive for my liking. I'm sorry. Now, moving up into level 4s, it's kind of a weird deck list. Because we really don't have many level 4s, like, at all. I've told you that we had 16 level 3s. We have 4 level 4s. And there's only one different type of Digimon. We've got a playset of Mechanorimon. And that's it. Now, it is a free cost to Digivolve, which is horrific. Properly horrific. But it is a 4 cost to play normally, so we'll generally go for there. It's got blocker, and you can't attack. But on your opponent's turn, when you delete an opponent's Digimon in battle and survive, you unsuspend it. 
When you combine that with the 6,000 power, what you get very simply is a phenomenal counter to Rookie Rush. Because that unsuspend when you delete a Digimon on your opponent's turn, that is not limited to once during your turn. So essentially, every time your opponent ever tries to attack the Digimon that's 5,000 power or less, which is basically a Rookie Rush deck, you can always block them and you just get made active again. So there's no, oh, do I block this or wait for one in future? No, you just block them all. That's why we're playing Mechanoramon here. It's really cool. But like I say, they are the only level fours. And then we end up with just three level fives. And they're not even black cards. We, we got three purple Digimon. That's it. Three Level 5, Purple Digimon. I did warn you that this is a slightly weird deck list. Now, what we've actually got here is Chimeramon. And when you play it, you may destroy one of your other Digimon and delete one of your opponent's level 5 or lower Digimon. But you see, we've got a really nice combo here with Commandramon. Because if you delete Commandramon, and it isn't on deletion skill, it's not a your turn or your opponent's turn or any of that, it is just any time it's deleted. So essentially here, you can delete your own Commandramon, but then the skill comes in and you probably get a replacement. But then you get rid of one of your opponent's Digimon. It's weird. And honestly, I've been knocking up some D-Brigade deck lists to test when we have BT5. I mean, BT4 is when they start coming in, but BT5 is, I think, when they start becoming good. But honestly, this is not how I was making my deck, ladies and gentlemen. My deck list looked quite different to this, which is one of the reasons I kind of find this super, super interesting. It's weird, but I'm kind of into it. And then we've got quite a lot of level 6s. Although, honestly, right, we need to start off with what is clearly the, the headliner of the deck. Because it's your big D-Brigade dude. And that is, of course, Dark Dramon. Now, Dark Dramon is amazing. Because it might be a quote-unquote 13 cost to play normally. But it's got Rush, which means the turn you play it, you can attack with it. And when you play it, you may return up to 5 D-Brigade Digimon from your trash to the top of your deck in any order, and gain two memory for each card return this way. Of course, when you're putting them back on top of your deck, you can do things like put the blocker command Ramon on top of your deck, so that when you inevitably delete your other command Ramon, when you look, you are going to find a blocker, etc. So this is pretty cool. The order in which you put them back can make a big difference. But make no mistake about it, it is an 11,000 power Digimon, and as long as you've got 5D Brigade in your trash, and hopefully you will sooner rather than later, then all of a sudden this is a free cost to play normally, 11,000 power with Rush. And if you've got a free cost to play Digimon that's got 11,000 power and can attack the turn you play it, that is going to lead you to victory very, very quickly. It's another reason why you have to go so hard on the Commandramon here, because, well, they're pretty gosh darn important. Now, there are some other level 6s we are playing here as well. We are also playing around with Machine Dramon. Now, Machine Dramon is a big old blocker. And when you play, and this is play, not Digivolve, you need Digivolve 2 on two of your opponent's Digimon. You trash the top two cards. You take a level 6 down to a level 4. Or a level 7 down to a level 5. Etc. It is a very powerful card. And sure you have to play it normally. But bearing in mind your Dark Dramon. You're essentially playing as a free cost. You can play some of your Command Dramon for free. You are essentially gaining so much cheeky memory throughout the game. That you can kind of afford... To occasionally play something like a Machine Dramon normally. Speaking of big old Digimon that you are going to be playing normally. And paying lots of memory to just play them all in one go. Might I remind you all about Magnadramon. Yeah that's right. Magnadramon's coming in here. Now I know this is a random yellow card popped into what is clearly a black deck with a little bit of purple. But when you play it. 
if you've got three or fewer security, you recover too. And I love this because essentially what we're doing here is giving ourselves extra recovery. We've already got a bunch of blockers, yeah? We've got a bunch of blockers running around. It's a black deck. We generally do have a bunch of blockers. But now, if your opponent manages to get through, that's okay, because now you can recover too as well. And the theory here, essentially, is that because you can cheat a little bit with Dark Dramon, and because you've got so many blockers to stop so many attacks, that if you can just play one Magnadramon once, even though, again, it's an expensive card you're playing normally, it's going to propel you up to victory. And that is not the only random level 6 we are popping in here. Apparently, we aren't done yet. There is just a single copy, and this does weird me out ever so slightly, of a blue level 6... Which is Hex Blaumon. Now, we all know that the way it works in Digimon is that we don't have much search and we don't have much draw. So playing a random one of level 6 is honestly not going to actually come out all that often. But I don't really care because this is kind of a cool tech. When you attack, you trash the bottom two Digivolution cards of one of your opponent's Digimon. And then if they have any Digimon with no Digivolution cards, you gain Jamming. So you're guaranteed to survive against security. That's kind of cool. But all of your opponent's Digimon without Digivolution cards can neither attack nor block. And this is a weird one because we've got a 12 cost to play normally and it's a blue and there's nothing from which you can evolve. So you've got to play it normally. And it's a random one-off. But the thing is, there are some decks like Megazoo and Rookie Rush that really don't play Digivolution cards. So essentially, you put one of these in, and sure, you might never draw into it, and that'll be sad, boo, hiss, etc. But if you can get it out, that gives you like a hard counter to those decks, and that's kind of fantastic. I like this. I can see this being a one or two of in a lot more decks. Now, moving over into level 7s, we have a couple of different options here. A couple of different Digimon we can be having a little bit of a play around with. We have got ourselves two copies of Omnimon Alter S. And yes, I know, it's Omnimon Alter S, but I'm sorry, Omnimon Alter S just so happens to be really good. When you Digivolve, all of your opponent's Digimon get D-Digivolved 1. And then you delete all of your opponent's Digimon that, after the D-Dig evolving, have 5,000 power or less. This can, if played correctly, essentially board wipe your opponent. And it's a great option to have. And, of course, this is something that you can actually dig evolve into here, which is pretty important. So, yeah, that sounds pretty good. And when you're attacking, you can essentially put a level 6 from under it into your hand to stop your opponent blocking. It'll give you one turn where you're not being blocked. That sounds pretty gosh darn good to me. And then we've got ourselves a couple copies of Millennium Mon, which is one we don't tend to see coming around all that often. Still kind of cool, mind you. And what we see here is, again, you can Digivolve from black, so that's a pretty good thing. When you Digivolve, you return one of your opponent's Digimon to the bottom of their deck. And on deletion, if you had any Digivolution cards, you can just play it again. So we've got a little bit more cheating going on. This deck is one that loves running around and doing that little bit of cheating. Making sure you're playing, basically, more cards than you should be allowed to play. But in, in a good way, kind of. And I like this. This is really cool. It gives you essentially a double use, which I like very much indeed. And when you did evolve, you just get to take one of your opponent's Digimon off the board. And, and it's another one of those things, right? If you've played enough games of Digimon, you will have realized that there are a lot of situations where purely taking one of your opponent's Digimon off the board is essentially enough to win the game. Where just removing one Digimon one time is going to be enough to jump you ahead in the game. That's pretty good. Now, in terms of Tamers here, we are playing one of them. They're a new fancy Tamers. It is Sora and Joe. And this is a four-cost blue Tamer. If your opponent has any Digimon with no Digivolution cards at the start of your turn, you gain 
to memory. And to be honest with you, gaining to memory is great. So it's better than we see from a lot of these. And it's not always going to work. Because we're not playing here a dedicated deck to remove Digivolution cards. It's, it's not what we're going for. However, some decks are just going to always have this. And some decks are going to sometimes have this. And then you've always got Hex Blaumon if you really want to have a bit of a play around in a bit of an emergency. And you know what? I kind of like this. It's a weird kind of one to be playing here. But I think it is going to work often enough to make it worth having in your deck. Oh yeah, and also, when one of your blue Digimon attacks, you may suspend it to trash the bottom two Digivolution cards of one of your opponent's Digimon. Which sounds really good, but bearing in mind, you're literally playing one singleton copy of a blue Digimon. Let's not get overly excited, shall we? It is, um, well, to put it bluntly, not gonna work all that often. Now, moving over into Tamer cards here, we have got ourselves, I believe, three copies here of the lovely little card, Laser Eye. Now, this is another one that came around in the starter deck. It just triggers D Digivolve 1 on up to two of your opponent's Digimon. Cool. You're just deleting Digivolution cards. Or I suppose you're not really even doing that. You're deleting from or trashing from the top, and trashing from the top is awesome awesome because it means that you're getting rid of the bigger threats the bigger digimon but if, if the bigger digimon weren't better we wouldn't be expending resources to digivolve up into them so being able to de-digivolve is pretty gosh darn good we're then playing four copies of the eight cost ultimate flare which again it's a super expensive card but you trigger de-digivolve free on one of your opponent's digimon and then delete all of your opponent's Digimon with a play cost of three or less. Again, against Rookie Rush, this can win you the game. Not always, but a lot of the time. And if it comes out as a security card, you just do it. So you're going to get some free uses of this as you go through tournaments. And that is going to give you a nice old advantage. It's a very cool card. Again, you're not always going to want to hard cast it. Because it is a very expensive card. But it's the kind of card where even if you don't play it for a couple of games in a row, you're going to turn around at some point and it is going to be absolutely huge and it is just going to win you the game there and then. And at that point, it is absolutely going to be worth it. And then we've got three copies of what I'm fairly sure is Absolute Blast. When you play it as a 6 cost, but again, it's free if it comes out as a security, you trash the Digivolution card at the bottom of one of your opponent's Digimon, and then return one of your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution cards to the bottom of their deck. So it's one more way of getting a Digimon off the field, which is honestly pretty gosh darn good. And we see we've got a similar thing going on here with Millennium Mon, and being able to take out your opponent's biggest threats that sounds pretty gosh darn good to me. This is a weird deck, ladies and gentlemen. 16 level 3s, 4 level 4s, 3 level 5s, and then, I mean, 9 level 6s, but there's 4 different types. And then we've actually got, like, 10 option cards, which is a lot, and a couple different level 7s. It's a little bit all over the place. But I'm kind of digging it, ladies and gentlemen. And it is definitely going to be one that I'm going to be checking out when these cards are legal. But I want to know what you think about this now. So let me know in the comment section, would you? Go nuts! Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Digimon and a whole bunch of other card games. And do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wasi Plays. <laughs>